Welcome back to UPSC Stack Byte. This week, I want to talk with you about the upcoming new schema that we are going to release in the PMP provisioning engine. In fact, with the PMP provisioning engine, whenever you create a provisioning template, you leverage an XML schema-based format, which can be uh, stored as an XML file or a .pmp file, which is actually an open XML file with the XML instance of the template inside of it, together with all of the other assets that you need. Or you can even use uh, the JSON format or the JSON serializer, even if it is not very used out there. At the time of this recording in the engine, we do support as the official supported uh, schema version, the 2018-07, so the one from July last year. Right now, we are going to release a new one, which will be released in the May uh, master release of the provisioning engine, which is the 2019-03. So, what is included? What are the main features of 2019-03? Well, for sure, one of the most important new capabilities is the support for provisioning teams in Microsoft Teams. So, you can provision a new team based on a JSON template. You can provision a new team based on a set of settings that you will define through an XML schema, which is the one we are talking about. Or you can clone a team from another one, which is already existing. You will also be able to define through the new schema a set of users that you can provision in the Jerk directory together with their credentials, with their user photo, and with their licenses if you want, so that you can easily create demo environment or you can easily automate the provisioning of new tenants at customer size. Moreover, we are going to introduce support for webhooks at the provisioning level. So whenever you will start or stop uh, a provisioning, whenever you will start or complete the execution of an handler inside the provisioning engine, you will be notified, if you like, through a webhook, as well as when there will be any exception during the provisioning process. Moreover, we are going to add support for site header and site footer of modern sites, as well as uh, some new properties and capabilities at the client side pages level, and many, many more new uh, capabilities. So let me move to the new environment and let me show you in practice how the new schema looks like. Let me show you the schema through an example. So first of all, the namespace of the new schema will be as usual, HTTP schemas dev office com, uh, uh, slash pmp slash 2019-03 which is the schema version slash provisioning schema inside this new schema uh, just to show you some of the most interesting parts uh, we have uh, a new section in the provisioning uh, template where we can define the provisioning template webhooks so let me search for it provisioning template oops sorry provisioning template uh, webhooks and as you can see in this section, the PMP provisioning template webhooks, we can define a webhook, which will have, uh, uh, of course, a URL of the webhook that will be invoked. We can define if we want to call the webhook with a GET or with a POST request. We can define the kind of webhook, which can be right now uh, a webhook uh, to be notified when the provisioning starts uh, or when the provisioning is completed, when a single object handler started or completed, or when an exception occurred. When you define uh, such webhook, you can provide uh, custom parameters in the URL of the webhook uh, or in the body of the webhook, and you can set those parameters value through this section inside the provisioning template webhook. And when you uh, define a webhook, you can also say that if it is a POST webhook, uh, the method, the HTTP method will be a POST, uh, you can provide uh, a setting for the body format. So it can be a body serialized as JSON or as XML or, or as a form URL encoded. And you can even configure the webhook to be synchronous or asynchronous. So plenty of options uh, to define custom webhooks uh, during the provisioning. And this is really useful whenever you need to control from outside what is happening in inside the provisioning process. Moreover, aside from the sequences that we introduced uh, uh, in the previous schema version, we now have the teams. And in the team section, we have the capability to define a team based on a template. So you define that you want to provision a new team with a specific display name, description, classification, and visibility, and everything else will be defined to a JSON template that you can extract from a live uh, team. Or you can define a team with all of its settings like security and everything else. Or you can even update an existing one. Or you can create a new one 
based on an already existing group uh, uh, if you like uh, because of course in order to create a team you need to have a group that will be promoted into a team you can configure uh, general properties of the team as well as uh, specific properties like fun settings uh, guest and member settings messaging settings and all the stuff that you can configure through the ui or through the microsoft graph because under the cover in the provisioning engine we are going to use the microsoft graph to do that you can configure the owners and the members of the team. You can configure channels and tabs inside channels. And when you define tabs inside channels, you can even reference tab resources, which can be, for example, a notebook uh, of OneNote uh, with its uh, custom data, or can be a planner uh, tab uh, or a schedule or whatever else you need to show. And this is an open model that in the near future we will enrich with the new capabilities as soon as they will come out. Moreover, when you provision a team, you can preload a set of messages inside a channel so that if, if, if you have to create a demo environment, you can feed all the channels with custom and uh, uh, predefined messages or can just be a welcome message uh, for the channel just created. And you can also configure apps in a team and those apps can be provisioned and installed in the team sub catalog still using the provisioning engine. Moreover, using Azure Active Directory, you can configure users and for every user, you can define uh, general settings like the display name and the nickname for his email, as well as the user principal name. But you can also define the password and the set of licenses that you want to assign uh, to that user. So really, really powerful. Moreover, at the client side pages, we have support for uh, uh, the latest new uh, properties released by Microsoft, uh, like uh, custom settings for the headers and stuff like that. And last but not least, uh, at uh, the site collection level, we have the section to define the uh, site footer. So PMP site footer and header, or let's search for the header. Uh, oops let's do that header okay this is the client side header and we also have the footer and the header of the whole site you can define what is the header what is the behavior of the header if you have a mega menu style or not and so on and so forth as well as you can define at the footer level if you have a footer what is the logo for the footer and what is the set of links that you want to show inside the footer so as i said plenty of new functionalities coming out uh, pretty soon uh, through the new schema 2019-03 of the provisioning engine of PMP. Stay tuned. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. I really want to thank you for watching it and I want to wish you a very, very happy Easter.